All right, part one got interrupted, so we're going to start again. Part two of this video, let's continue on from where we were. And what we were doing was, let's see. All right, a paired sample t-test. We had just succeeded in making a long data frame for 25 subjects worth of data. Each person contributes 10 data points five measurements on Wednesday, five on Sunday. And uh, we, had, we created some random numbers here to represent the different weights uh, for each of these scenarios. Now this was uh, the shape of data for a paired sample t-test. And just like with the one sample t-test, we can't just go and put this straight raw data into a paired sample t-test because we need to get the mean weight for Wednesday and the mean weight for Sunday for each person in order to compare the difference. Um, oh, what I'm doing here in, in the code is just showing an example of doing each of these steps all in one go. So we could do it this way. And here we have a dplyr pipeline where we take our data, we group it by subject number and day and then we do a summarize operation to create a new variable called mean weight. That gives us the mean of the weights for each subject and day. So it's collapsing over the measurement number level. All right. And I'm just printing out the data frame so we can look at it briefly here. Uh, we're just looking at the first three subjects. We got subject one and their mean for Sunday and Wednesday, subject two, their mean for Sunday and Wednesday, and so on. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before in last semester, but the head function, it prints out the top of a data frame. So this data frame is longer than just these six lines. Here it is, it's 50 lines long. And um, head is useful if you just want to see the first top part of it. Make a note of this because um, in the next few examples, we're going to switch from using data frames to using Tibble. And Tibble does this part automatically for you. We'll get to that in a second. All right. Well, now we have the data frame with subjects days and mean weights, we can run the t-test function on that. And I'm using the formula style where we do mean weight, the column name here, the means, the tilde and day. So we're saying mean weight as a function of day and day is right here. Set paired to true set the data to equal subject means, which is the name of the data frame, and we can run that t-test and get our uh, paired sample t-test on this simulated data. All right, let's try an independent sample t-test. So we've got a slightly different research design. We have 10 subjects, so n equals 10, and they're all going to do a recall memory test. So let's say everybody reads 50 words for a later memory test. And in this experiment, half of the participants go into a noisy room and the other half go into a quiet room. So the independent variable is rooms, room type, noisy versus quiet. And how about we give everybody a blank piece of paper well, with 50 lines on it. And what you have to do is write down as many words as you can remember. And the researcher will go and mark the answers, give it a one if the word was uh, correctly recalled, that is a word was uh, one of the 50 that was read before, or a zero if it, if it wasn't. This is one way you could measure uh, how many words a person recalled. And I'm making a note here, I'm switching to a tibble for this. Um, it's basically if you just quickly look here, I'm making different columns and I put them in a tibble. We've done that before. We've made different columns as vectors and put them in a data dot frame. 
we'll just flip back to the website. So why would I do this? I mean, to be honest, I almost never use Tibbles personally. I have nothing against Tibble. I see that it keeps popping up in the tidyverse style of things. So I thought I would check it out. If we click this link, you can go read a blog that's kind of old now, 2016. And uh, Hadley Wickham is explaining himself and why, uh, why there's such a thing called Tibble. And basically all a Tibble is, is a data frame with a few other things, but it's pretty much a data frame. So we can use it like a data frame. If you store something as a Tibble, uh, it will automatically, when you print it out, show the first 10 things. And so it's sort of like got the head operation built in that we just talked about. Another thing about Tibbles is that they don't change your columns um, in terms of the kind of class that they are. So you might have a, a column that is a bunch of words. And if you input a, some file with a column of words, data frames really want to convert those characters to factors. This type of conversion between classes doesn't happen with tibbles, as, as far as I understand. But you could read this little blog post to learn more. For us, we're, we're just going to use them because it's slightly different than a data frame. It's good to know you have some options. Um, just get comfortable with tibbles. Another thing you could use, use is a data table. So there's multiple options for tables in R. So let's look at the independent sample t-test. Head back to R. Remember, we've got 10 subjects, and they're each trying to remember 50 words. So what I want to do is create uh, the raw data file. I'm going to make some subjects. The way I've done this one is I'm going to have the numbers 1 to 10 each happen 50 times. For the room, um, well, actually, let me, let me just pump all of this together, and we can take a look at the result. So this is the tibble, but it's, again, just a data frame. So subject one, let's see if I've done this properly. We should have 50 numbers here. And the way I've done it is I've assigned subject number one to a noisy room. And I've said that they've got uh, 50 words that they could have recalled. And I chose some random numbers, zeros and ones, to stand in here. Uh, to represent whether they correctly recalled words one to 50. Subject number two, same thing. Subject number three and subject number four and subject number five. As you can see, they all have 50 words and random numbers suggesting that they were correct or incorrect in terms of recalling that word. Now, when we get to subject six, the subject six to 10 were all in a different room. So I lined it up such that the level on, in the room column uh, changes to quiet. And other, so all subjects 6 to 10 are in the quiet room. So just to look a little bit more closely at each of the vectors, we use rep on the sequence 1 to 10, and we repeat each number 50 times. For the room column, we repeat the vector noisy quiet, but I want the word noisy to be repeated quite a lot. So I want it to repeat 50 times. Uh, that's going to be how many I need for one person. There's five people in the room, so 50 times five, so 250 times each. So that will print noisy at the top 250 times first and then 250 quiets. I want to repeat the sequence 1 to 50 to represent each of the individual words 10 times. And then I want to just create some random values to stand for some random binary variables, 0 and 1 standing for whether the person correctly recalled a word or not. So I've got all of that. I want to show you that because I put it into a tibble here, when I run recall data, 
it automatically prints the first 10 things. And it's a nice property of the tibble. But don't get too confused, it's pretty much a data frame. So we have the raw data. I'd like to do an independent samples t-test on this kind of data. So I'm going to group by subjects and rooms. So subjects is the diff so we've got 10 different people and we've got uh, two different kinds of rooms. I want to count up how many correct each person got in each room. So I should end up with 10 rows, five subjects in room, the noisy room, five in the quiet room. And for each person, I want to know how many they, they got correct. For number subject number one, I could go here and count by hand how many they got correct, and that would be the answer for that person. So I want to do it by hand. I'm grouping by subjects in room. I'm using the summarize operation, but instead of getting the mean, I'm just going to get the sum, counting up how many ones are in the column called correct. So we can do all that. Now, all of this gets put into the, sorry, the count data table. And here we have it. We've got the different counts for each thing. I want to point out one more thing. So recall data here, we made this a tibble. And then to create the count data variable, we sent this tibble through a pipeline and put um, that grouped the data and that summarized it to produce another table. And we put the contents of that table into the new variable count data. And then I just printed it out here just so we could look at it. And we can see that it is also a tibble. If it, it was a data frame that we'd created up here and done the same thing, it would have um, stayed as a data frame. I would just show that as an example. So data.frame. So we see the description is a DF. And uh, when we do the count data, oh, it's turned into a tibble. Hmm. I'm actually not sure why. Interesting. Is this? Huh. I guess uh, for some reason, the the dplyr operations turn the data frame into a tibble. Well, I guess I learned something today. Hooray! We'll leave that as a tibble. Anyways, now that we have five participants in each of our rooms, we can run an independent samples t-test just like this. OK, moving on, simple linear regression. So let's consider this example. 100 people write down their height in centimeters and the day of the month they were born. Conduct a linear regression to see if day of month explains variation in height. All right, so we need to create two vectors. They should each have 100 numbers in them. And one of them should be heights in centimeters, and the other one should be a day of the month that someone is born. So I'm making this right here, call it people, make it a tibble. I'm saying there's going to be a, a height column with 100 random numbers from a normal distribution, the mean 90 and uh, standard deviation 10. I don't know if that's, I, I just made up those numbers, but there's going to be 100 of them. For day, um, referring to date of birth, I'm going to sample 100 numbers from the sequence of numbers 1 to 31, and I'm going to say replace equals true. So it's just going to sample randomly from the values 1 to 31 which are days of the month you could be born on. So this is a pretty simple data shape. And here's an example of what it could look like. And once we have that, we can pop it into the LM function for linear model. And uh, we can get our coefficients for the regression line. And we can look at the summary. So this is just a review of running a simple linear regression when we discussed this last semester. 
All right, we're about to move on to some things we haven't yet discussed in this class that we will discuss in forthcoming labs. If you think about what we talked about last semester, we didn't really get past really simple experiments where there was two groups or two conditions. In general, there was one manipulation and two levels to the manipulation. And uh, with those kinds of designs, it's uh, pretty easy to use T-Chess or something like that to compare a difference between the first and the second level. We have not yet discussed designs with one manipulation that involves multiple levels beyond two. And that's what we could use an ANOVA for. So in the one-way ANOVA, it's uh, just for now, we can think of it as an extension of a t-test to handle single factor designs, that's fa designs with one manipulation, but with multiple levels. So in our paired sample t-test example from this lab, uh, where we had considered people weighing themselves five times on Wednesday and five times on Sunday, uh, clearly there's more days of the week in our universe. <laughs> so. You know, if we wanted to do this experiment on uh, uh, measure your weight on every single day of the week, we could do that. So instead of having two levels, Wednesday and Sunday, we could have seven levels, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right. So let's consider the shape of the data that might result from an experiment with 25 people that measure them their weight five times a day, and they do it every day of the week. I have that represented here. It's not a whole lot different from what we had before. I'm just gonna run this, and let's take a look at the shape. So we've got subjects number one, and uh, Sunday five times, measurement one, two, three, four, five, Monday five times, Tuesday, Wednesday, th each of these go five times, all the way from Sunday to Saturday. So five times seven is 35. There's gotta be 35 rows per person. We've gotta have a, a column to represent which person we're talking about, a column to represent which day we're talking about, a column to represent which measurement we're talking about, and a column to represent the measurement that was taken. And really the only thing that I did here that's different was added more level names for day and changed a few of the uh, values here. I think the seven used to be a two before. Once we have this simulated data, we could do an ANOVA. I'll just briefly do that here. So for example, the first thing we would need to get are subject means. We wanna know the mean weight for each person for each day of the week. So we have to transform the shape of the raw data that doesn't, that's just single measurements and get the means grouped by each person and day. As a foreshadow of future labs, to run the ANOVA in R, it's a simple one-liner just like this. So there we have it. We can print out the ANOVA tables using the summary function, but I'm not going to go into this now because we'll be talking about ANOVA in the coming weeks. A theme that we'll be exploring throughout the semester is that ANOVA and linear regression are fundamentally the same thing. They're just different ways of thinking about the same general linear model. And so what I'm showing here is you could take that very same data that we made and conduct a linear regression and get the same answer. So for example, the F value here is the same as the F value you'd get down here. Uh, yeah, so looks like this was rounded 9.14 and down here is 0.9137. All right. The most complicated designs that we talk about in this course are versions of factorial ANOVAs where you have um, multiple independent variables, each with multiple levels. 
So up to now, we've talked about um, one manipulation in the experiment. Well, you could have multiple manipulations if you wanted to, and each of them could have as many levels as you want. To keep it simple here, let's think about a seven by two design, a way of extending uh, this design that we just talked about before. So for example, let's say you thought your weight might fluctuate depending on the day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe you s each day you weigh a little bit differently depending on all sorts of things like how, um, how much walking you do, how much you eat on the weekends and different stuff like that. Uh, let's say you're also interested in the role of time of day, so morning versus afternoon or morning versus evening or something like that. Uh, these are two factors, uh, the day and the time of day. These are seven days, and we could split the day in two, so there could be two sides to the day. So we have a seven by two design. We'll talk about this notation later. Uh, for now, it tells us the number of numbers that you see tells you how many independent variables there are. So there's two here. So there's two independent variables. And the actual number tells you how many levels there are. So this seven means there's seven levels to the first independent variable. The first one is referring to day of the week. The two refers to two levels of time of day. And I'm coding that here as morning versus evening. Right, so our goal is to create a data frame that is capable of representing measurements for 25 people who have uh, measured their weight two times in the morning and two times in the evening every day of the week. I'm just gonna quickly run this and we'll take a look at uh, what I've done. So, we have subject number, we have day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. We have a new factor for time of day, morning versus evening. I'm trying to pause this, but it's not responding. Oop. All right, minor glitch there, but um, we also have this is redundant, the measurement number. Is this working? Let's see. One, two, one, two. Oh yeah, this is wrong. What I have here is messed up. I'm gonna have to change this. So let's take a look and see why it's wrong. For subject number one, in on Sunday, they have two measurements in the morning, this one and this one. But I wanna make sure this is coded as a one and a two not a one and a one. And they have two measurements in the evening. I've got that coded here as a two. So right now my measurement number is redundant with the time of day. Measurement number isn't actually super important here, but let's make it work properly anyways. Um, all right. Now there's a couple different ways I can do that. I'm just going to do a simple fix. Let me see if this works. All right, I think this is a clear way of seeing how to set it up. Um, so we've got our ones for subject one, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then within Sunday, two mornings, two evenings, two mornings, two evenings, and so on. And then within morning, we've got one, two, and within evening, one, two, and so on. And then a whole bunch of weights there. And if we got all the means, so this in this case, what we have is, uh, the mean weight for each person for each day, for each time of day, these are the means. 
And if you had all of those means like that, you could run a factorial ANOVA, and it would look something like this. And as I was saying before, we'll learn how ANOVA and regression are related, so we could take this very same data and put it in a linear regression context. We could look at the regression um, intercepts, and we could also look at the ANOVA model and find out that they're the same. Uh, but we'll go into that into more detail in class. All right. So stay tuned for the next video that will go over the generalization assignment for this week.